Hello po, magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Kumusta po tayo? Uh, nitong mga nakaraang araw po or nito pong nakaraang linggo, to be more specific, we've been uh, reminded by the power of what Jesus did for us. Gustong-gusto ko po yung uh, sinabi ni Coach People last Sunday na ang pag-aaral ho natin ng resurrection ay hindi lamang pang intelektual kundi ho atin po itong inaaral upang ma-apply ho natin sa ating mga buhay. Ma-realize ho natin ang kapangyarihan ng Diyos. Ang kapangyarihan ng Diyos na bumuhay po ulit ng mga pangarapin ho natin na wasak yung atin pong mga Uh, mga na, nasira ho na mga pangarapin, yun pong atin pong mga pagkakamali. No, kaya po, sabi ho kanina ng awit, yung broken people are embraced by God. Kaya po, ang resurrection ho ay napakahalaga ho nating binabalikan, hindi lamang po during Easter Sunday. Kung di po, paulit-ulit ho. Kasi yun po ang meron ho tayong kapangyarihan. Yung kakayanan ho nating bumangon, kakayanan po nating magbago ng buhay, kakayanan ho nating magkaroon ng second chances, kakayanan ho nating baguhin po ang ating mga sarili upang maging kagamit-gamit ho tayo. No? Kaya po sa linggong ito, sa araw na ito, ito po ay paalala ho sa bawat isa sa atin. Kung tayo po ay nadidiscourage, tayo po ay nalulugmok. Bumangon ho tayo. Kaya sabihin mo sa katabi mo, bumangon ka nga. Sige nga po. Ayan. No? Huwag kang matutulog. Bumangon ka na. No? Kasi ho, marami ho sa atin, pag na, na, natumba ho, naku ho, no? memorize ho natin ang biblical scriptures ho about the resurrection. Pero hindi ho natin may apply sa ating mga sarili. Kung paano ho ba tayo magkaroon ng faith na bumangon ulit, no? Kasi po marami ho sa atin, no, dadaanan ho natin talaga ang adversity. Dadaanan ho talaga natin ang frustrations, ang atin pong mga uh, pinlano na hindi natutuloy, dadaanan ho natin 'yan. Pero ang mahalaga po, 'yun pong pagbangong umuli. Kaya 'di ba po, wala hong pagbangong muli o pagkabuhay na muli kung walang kamatayan. Kaya parte ho ng buhay ng mga anak ng Diyos, yung kamatayan ho, we die. No? We die every day. How does death come to us? The death of our dreams, the death of our aspirations. Maybe we suffer death ho, um, death with relationships ho. Death with anything that is painful in our lives. And we need these things so that we can experience the power of resurrection, that we can rise again. Yan ho ang kapangyarihan na kailangan-kailangan pong balikan ho ng mga Pilipino. Balikan ho natin. Kasi ho, mad- nadidiscourage ho tayo agad. Kaya nga ho, di ba ho, sa- sabi ho ng salmista sa Psalm 43, sabi niya, Why so downcast, O my soul? Kinausap niya ho yung sarili niya. Why so downcast, O oh my soul? Put your hope in God. Alam niyo ho, you cannot, you cannot rely on other people to, to, to pull you up so many times. No? To, to, to cause you to rise up from where you have fallen. It is you and I who will decide. Tayo ho ang magdi-decide kung maghihil ho ang ating mga sugat. Tayo ho ang magdi-decide kung tayo pang ditiwala sa Diyos. Tayo ho ang magdi-decide kung babangon tayo ulit. Masakit ho sa atin ho may mga loved ones ho tayo na tinutulungan ho natin, mga mahal natin sa buhay, di ba? Na, na ginag- may ginagawa sila ho mga yung mga pangit ho na desisyon sa buhay. Gusto natin silang ibangon, gusto na, natin silang iangat. Pero we realize that we can only do so much. We cannot do all the work because the person has to decide to be healed internally. The person has to decide to dream again, to bounce back. The person has to decide to get up and get going. Kaya today, baka ikaw o tayo ang dahilan kung bakit ho hindi tayo nakakabangon. Kasi po, we're not deciding it because we're not believing that we can. We're not believing that we can rise up from where we have fallen through the power of God that is within us. 
Yun ang promise ng Diyos sa iyo, sa akin. Ang espiritu ng makapangyarihan sa lahat ay nasa sa iyo, nasa atin. Kaya lamang ho, nakakalimutan ho natin. Hindi ho ba? Mukha bang may amnesia yung katabi niyo? Tanongin nyo nga, may amnesia ka ba? Sige, mag-usap po tayo. Nakakalimutan ho natin ang kapangyarihan ng Diyos sa ating buhay. Yung kapangyarihan ng Diyos na may kakayan ng bumuhay ng mga patay, magpagaling ng may sakit, bumuhay ng mga pangarap na namatay, no? magbuo ng mga relasyon na nasira. Yan ho ang kapangyarihan ng Diyos. Kaya lamang po, dito ho sa Pilipinas, ho, kadalasan ho, binabasa na lang ho natin ang Bible. Hindi ho siya buhay. Wala ho siyang aliveness sa ating buhay. Hindi siya totoo. Kaya panalangin natin today, we decide, Lord, let your scriptures, let your promises, let the power of the resurrection be alive and real in me. Alam niyo ho, kung ikaw po ay napapagod, kung ikaw po, yung salmista na nagsasabing, Why so downcast, O my soul? Kailangan mong bumangon. Bakit po? Kailangan, kailangan wag kang mapagod. Kailangan magpatuloy ka. Alam mo bakit? Kasi hindi para sa sarili mo. Madami kang taong matutulungan, kaya katinawag ng Diyos, may panawagan ka, binigyan ka ng mga resources na meron ka, huwag kang basta-basta mapapagod. Maraming maliliit na bagay na sisira ng pangarapin mo, pero tinawag ka ng Diyos upang gawin ang mga bagay na makakatulong sa iba. Imaginein mo kung hindi ka kikilos, hindi ka susunod sa panawagan ng Diyos. Iintindihin lang natin ho ang ating mga sarili. Hindi ho ba akala natin dyan tayo sasaya? Sa totoo lang, dyan tayo mamamatay. Yan ang kamatayan ho natin. At hindi ko po makalimutan ang sabi ho ni Sun Changra sa libro niyang The Next Evangelicalism, Freeing the Church from Western Cultural Captivity. Sabi niya, our church life becomes an expression of an individualism, yielding a self-absorbed Narcissism. Instead of the church becoming an expression of a spiritual life, live in the community of believers or a spiritual life expressed in the context of a neighborhood community, our church life becomes a fulfillment of our individual desires and needs. We come to church because we have individual desires and needs. That's all. Elements of the worship service, including the preaching of the word and the worship of God, become reduced to a form of therapy that places the individual at the center of the worship service. It's no longer, I have to be fed by the Word of God, to be strengthened by the Word of God and the community of the believers so that I can bear fruit and I can help other people in my community. You know why? Because that is my call. Yan ako. Kaya ngayon, kung nalulog mo ka, may dahilan ka para bumangon. Parang kape lang, no? No, ano bang dahilan mo bumangon? Excited na ako magkape. Bumangon ka, magsikap ka ulit, panghawakan mo yung sarili mo. Huwag mo nang iasa yung pag, ha, pag, pag-angat sa sarili mo sa ibang tao. Salamat sa Diyos kung may mga taong tutulong sa'yo. Pero wag ho tayong, alam mo yun, yung bang expectations versus reality. Ay, hindi ho ba? Diyan ho tayo nasisira eh. Diyan tayo nalulugmok. We expect people to inspire us always, to motivate us always, to help us get up on our feet. No, you will just, you will just waste emotional energy. Mauubos ka. Sa mga little things na, oh, nagtatampo ako, ay, naiinis ako. Ay, bakit hindi? Yung mga expectations mo sa ibang tao. No. Because Jesus resurrected, get up. Wow. Naalala nyo ano yung unang sinabi ho ng, mga, ng, ng Panginoon sa mga disciples? Follow me. Follow me. Tapos yung pangalawa ko, ay yung una ding sinabi niya kay Pedro, follow me. Yung huli niyang sinabi kay Pedro, follow me. Follow me. Nobody can do the following for you. You only can do the following to Jesus. You have to get up and walk. Kahit ho na tumbaka, get up and walk. Nobody can do that for you. 
That's your decision. That's your choice. Not your pastor, not your small group leader, not anyone, not even the person that loves you the most. Nobody can change your life for you. You have to decide it for yourself. That's the power of the resurrection. Yan ho ang, ang, ang kapangyarihan ng Panginoon na nasa iyo na magamit ka ng Panginoon. Hindi ho ba? Kasi ho yun ho ang ultimate fulfillment, ultimate kagalakan sa buhay. Yung ikaw po ay may gamit sa iyong komunidad. Kaya ho namamatay ang mga iglesia, namamatay ho ang spiritual life ng mga tao. Pag I me myself, lagi ka nakatingin sa sarili mo. Kung paano ko paliligayahin ang sarili ko, kung paano ko uh, payayamanin ang sarili ko, kung paano ko pag-iigihin ang mga ginagawa ko. Pero pag pinalitan mo yan, paano ko pag-iigihin ang mga ginagawa ko upang makatulong pa ako sa kapwa ko? Paano ba ako magiging successful para maraming ma-inspire sa akin na kaya pala nila? Kasi ho, pwede ho na lagi ho natin ginagamit ang scriptures para sa selfish desires ho natin. So wala siyang kapangyarihan. Hindi kikilos ang Diyos. Kasi kikilos lang ang Diyos kung may kamatayan. Kikilos lang ang Diyos kapag may pagsuko. Lord, wala na eh. Ikaw na to. Huh? Kaya alam niyo ho, babasahin ko po ang Galatians kasi dito sa Galatians so we are reminded by Paul that love, to live a life of love is all that matters, not the law. Because when you live in love, the law follows, order follows. Without you knowing it, you will sense what's good, what's real, what's perfect. You will know it. Kaya ho ito, nag-aaway ho sila. Ano bang kailangan kong gawin para maging mas maigi akong Christian? Kailangan ko bang gawin yung mga rituales ng mga hudyo? Yun ho yung, yun ho, ano ho eh, tension ho sa, ng mga Galatians. Pero ito po, ang ganda ho ng chapter 6. Basahin po natin. Ang title po nito sa Bible I bear, bear one another's burdens. Bear one another, another's burdens. Pasanin mo ang mga pinapasan ng iba. Pakipasan ka. Tulungan mo yung iba. Sabi niya, my friends, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you have received the Spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Hindi yung, na, sab, according to this uh, context of the Galatians, hindi yung na-circumcise ba ako, o hindi ba ako umiinom, uh, kumakain ng dugo, or whatever uh, uh, laws. There are ng mga Jews na gusto nilang impose sa amin upang maging ganap ang aming pagiging Christians at godly. Hindi daw yun ang mahalaga. It is to bear one another's burden. Yung iniisip mo yung kapwa mo. Iniisip mo kung paano ka aangat para sa kapwa mo. Para maging malakas ka. Kuha natin. Kasi may mission ka. May mission ka. Opo. May mission ka po. Opo. Sabihin mo sa katabi mo, may mission ka. Magpakatatag ka. Sige. Sabihin mo. Kaya ho, sabi niya dito, For if those who are nothing think they are something, they deceive themselves. All must test their own work. Then that work, rather than their neighbor's work, will become a cause for pride. For all must carry their own loads. Those who are taught the word must share in all good things with their teacher. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So, let us not grow weary in doing what is right. I want us to read this together. Because there is power when you hear yourself say words that 
that affirm you, that strengthen you, especially from the scriptures. Can we read this together? Ito po. Okay. Ayaw nyo? Kailangan may premyo? <laughs> Sige po, basahin natin. Uh, in my count, one, two, three. So let us not... Ay, malungkot. Para kayong Semana Santa pa rin. So let us not grow weary. Talagang weary kayo. Para nga not grow weary in doing what is right. For we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all and especially for those of the family of faith. So today, sing to yourself, Why so downcast, O my soul? Put your hope in God. Sabi niya, Why so downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed? Meron pa palang linyang ganun. Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God. Kwelyoan mong sarili mo. Put your hope in God. Hindi pa tapas ang kwento. May susunod pang kabanata. Parang series lang, no? Kay drama yung buhay mo. May susunod pang kabanata. Kaya nga, wag kang mapagod. Kung mapagod ka, magpahinga ka, pero sunod ulit. Follow me. Follow me. Yan ang sabi ng Diyos sa'yo. Sabi ni Jesus sa'yo. Sabi ho ng Ephesians 2, this is who you are. This is who I am. This is who we are, my friends. Sabi ni Ephesians 2.10, for we are God's handiwork. Special na pagkakagawa ng isang craftsmanship ng Diyos. We are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do what? To do what? Good works. Grabe, no? Hindi niya sinabi dito na, uh, for we are God's handiwork, if you are kind, if you are nice, no? Sabi niya, you, are create, you will be created in Christ Jesus to do good work, depende, depending on your langit points. Hindi ho ganun. Yan ang identity mo. Identity ko. Balikan natin yan. Ano bang... Tinatanong ho natin, ano bang purpose ko? Nagbasa pa ho tayo ng purpose-driven life. May mga sinagutan pa po tayong mga tanong doon. Kakaiba, no? Pero sa totoo lang, ang purpose mo is to do good works. Now, you ask me, what are those good works? Ang good works, kaharap mo na. Kung nasaan ka. Huwag kang maghanap ng ibang sitwasyon. Yan ka, nandyan ang oportunidad. Nilagay ka ng Diyos dyan sa oportunidad na yan para ipanalo mo ang buhay ng Diyos sa buhay mo. Okay po ba? Nandyan na. Buksan mo yung mga mata mo. Andyan ang opportunities. Minsan, gusto mo, naghahanap ka pa. Hindi, kailangan gusto ko ng iba eh. Gusto ko ng ganyan eh. Di ba po? Parang, kaya huwag ka maghahanap. Nandyan. Nandyan ka na. Bakit? Nagkakamali ba ang Diyos? Hindi. Nilagay ka niya kasi yan ang pinagpipray niya. Pinagpipray mo upang, alam mo yun, magkaroon ka ng character training. Diyan mo madidiskubre. Kasi bakit? Hahanapin mo kung saan ka lulugar. Eh, saan, anong oportunidad dito upang may hayag ko ang kabutihan ng Diyos. Nilagay ka dyan. Tandaan mo. Kaya sabi ho niya, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Nakaprepare na yan for you. That's our identity. We're not meant to waste our lives. We're not meant to, you know, um, wonder all our lives what we are here for. Probably we don't find who we are because we never really look where we have to look. We have never really opened our eyes who, who we are. But if we open our eyes and embrace the moment, then you will see that God is here right now. Andyan siya. Namimiss ho natin yung opportunities. The God-given opportunities because we are busy thinking of yesterday or tomorrow. We're busy worrying. 
God is in this moment in your pain, in your triumph, in your need, in your rejoicing. God is here. Kaya ho sabi ho ng Ephesians 5, ito ho tayo eh. Sabi niya, for once, you were darkness. But now in the Lord, you are light. Ilaw ho tayo. Hindi lang pala si inay ang ilaw ng tahanan. Hindi ho, we're more than that. We're the light of the world. Imagine mo yun. Lord, I'm so broken. I'm so nothing, Lord. How can I be a light? But that's who you are. That's how God calls you. You were once in darkness, but now in the Lord, you are light. Live as children of light. Live as children of light. Grabe, ano? Sometimes, we miss that. We live in darkness. So unfortunate. So unnecessary. We live in darkness when we don't have to be there. That the door is wide open for us to go into the light because that's who we are. Para ho tayong mga anak ng prinsip, anang ah, haari ho, na ayaw ho nating suotin yung damit ng, mga, ng prinsesa at prinsipe na mas gugustuhin pa natin hong mamuhay sa may kanal kaysa hong mamuhay sa palasyo. Yan ho yun eh. Kaya hindi ho tayo makaangat. Hindi ho natin maintindihan kung sino ho tayo. Kaya ho, alam niyo ho, kailangan, kailangan ho yan ang mensahe nating mga Pilipino. Because we don't believe in ourselves. We only... Kunyari, proud tayo sa sarili natin. Pero sa totoo lang, hindi tayo proud sa ating mga sarili. Kinahihiya natin ang ating mga sarili. We always think that other races are better than us. Grabe ho. Nabasa ko ho sa triple package, sabi ng mga Cubans. Yung mga Cubano daw po, pag nagtuturo sa mga anak nila, si Adan at si Eva, Cubans daw. Imagine ninyo yun. Si Adan at si Eva Cubans. At ang pinakamagandang lugar sa balat ng lupa, ang paraiso, ay ang Cuba. Imagine mo yan. So bata ka pa, yun ang sinasabi sa'yo. At sabi, kaya walang mga poisonous snakes dito at mga, uh, mga poisonous insects dahil ito ang paraiso ng Diyos. Imagine mo yun. Pero tayo ho, pag pumunta ho tayo sa, usong-uso ho yan ngayon, yung mga mapa ng Pilipinas, nakikita ko sa mga post. Sino hong nag-post noon yung mga mapa ng Pilipinas, kung color, color pula, I've been there, color yellow, dumaan lang ako. Ganun ba yon Meron ba kayo noon? Nakita nyo yun? No? Tapos pag puti, never been there. Kaya ang feeling nung iba, pag puro puti, okay, kawawa naman ako, isa lang tiny dot na red. Metro Manila. Hindi <laughs> man lang nakalabas ng Metro Manila. No? Tayo ho, pag nagbiyahe ho tayo sa Pilipinas, yung gandang-ganda ho tayo, sabi natin, oh, parang abroad. O, diba? Alam niyo ho na mangha ho, ako nang pumunta ho kami minsan sa Koron, grabe, iyak ako ng iyak. Kasi sobrang ganda, hindi ko ma-explain. Tapos, nung pumunta ko kami sa um, mga lakes, naka, sinong nakapunta sa koron dito? Di ba yung mga lake na naghalo yung maalat na tubig at saka, di ba ho, the fresh? Sobrang ganda! Sobrang sarap maligo kahit takot na takot ho ako sa malalim na tubig kasi tingnan nyo naman ako. Kailangan hanggang tuhod lang yung tubig. Kasi wala eh, No? Eh, ang lalim, mga ilang feet ba yun? Mga 30 feet deep, ganun ho. Pero ang ganda ho. Sobrang iyak ho ako sa ganda. Tapos, 
Magpumunta ho tayo ng mga Bali, Indonesia, pumunta ho tayo ng mga beach sa Bondi Beach sa Australia, para ho tayong nakaisa. Para ho tayong, hoy, masikat ako sa inyo. Pero my God, ang koro ng ganda. Pero naiyak na naman ho ako. Dahil wala pong CR. <laughs> naiyak ho ako. Yun ho yung mga iyakan, uh, dapat iyakan. No? Kasi ho, ito pa ho yung binubuno natin. But ako ho, I believe, we cannot raise our countrymen, we cannot raise our country if we do not see what's beautiful in us. If we do not appreciate what's good in us. We have to go back to that. Kaya ho, sa pagiging kristyano ho natin, para makabangon ho tayo sa pagkakalugmok, we have to go back to who we are as declared by God. We are His craftsmanship. We are His handiwork. We are people of the light. We are meant for good works. Kaya tutulungan ka talaga ng Diyos eh. Kung nais mo, bumangon ka, lumabang ka, umangat ka, kasi iniisip mo, Lord, magamit mo naman ako. Pag ganyan ho ang pag-iisip ho natin, imposible hindi ka bibiyayaan ng Diyos. Imposible hindi ka niya tutulungan. Pero pag iniisip natin ang ating sarili, wala ang tulong ho ng Diyos doon. Kasi sisirain natin ang sarili natin eh. That is why this is very important. Kasi sabi niya, Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. That's what Jesus did. Jesus is for the broken people. Jesus is for those people who cannot fight for themselves. That's why He had to show the way so that makita ho natin paano ba umangat. Kaya ho, alam niyo ho, pwede ho, eto po no, pwede ho tayong magbasa ho ng magbasa ng Bible, pero wala ho nangyayari sa ating buhay. That's what I want to show you today. This is a very sad story. Are you prepared? Do you have tissues with you? <laughs> no or ipunas mo na lang yung sipon mo at luha sa braso ng katabi mo no yung tipong oh di ba singahan mo na lang yung t-shirt niya hindi po joke lang because this person i really admire this person because my god ang galing ho niyang kumanta kilala niyo si Whitney Houston right hindi Ha? Huh? Hindi o. Oh. Kilala niyo si Whitney Houston. Bata pa lang ho ako, wala, namulat na ako sa mundong may Whitney Houston. Kaya nung namatay ho siya, naiyak ho ako. Sinong naiyak dito? Yung, hindi naman palahaw na iyak. Yung ganon-ganon lang. Huh? Ganon-ganon lang. Naiyak ka ba? O? Oh? O sumigaw ka pa? Whitney! Tapos si Whitney Tyson yung... <laughs> Sumagot. So, alam niyo ho, kagaya nga ho ni, ano, ni um, Michael Jackson, when he died, I also felt very sad because sabi ko, oh my God, hindi ko pa nakita ng live si Michael Jackson. I wanted to see him dance or do his very famous moonwalk dance live. Diba? Kasi kahit na anong galing nung kapatid mo mag-moonwalk o yung katabi mo mag-moonwalk, wala eh. Walang magic. Kaya ho, si Whitney Houston, sobrang galing. I mean, I don't know if she's nearly unmatched in her skill. She's one once-in-a-lifetime artist. Kasi pag kumanta ho siya, pag tumaas na ho yung boses niya, hindi ho lo, naiipit. Hindi gaya nung kapitbahay mo. Di ba pag nag-video ke? Diyos ko dahi. Pag bumibirit na, ang sheket. No? Ang sheket, pakinggan. Masakit na kong pakinggan. Kasi oh, mahirap po yun. Pag mataas na, naiipit na. Pero ito si Whitney Houston, pag kumanta, pag tumaas, ay grabe, parang ang bukang buka pa yung kaha niya dito na hindi ko maintindihan. Ang galing eh. No? 
para ho maalala ho natin kung gano'n siya kagaling. Kasi taas, tapos biglang baba. Nasa tono pa rin. Subukan mo nga. Huh? Diba? Pag tumaas ka, kailangan may ganyan pa, may ganun. Bago ka makarating sa baba. Siya ho, ang galing. Pakinggan ho natin itong isa sa mga Grammys na kung saan nag-perform po siya ng awit. Sa gitna ko na lang ho pina-start yung one moment in time. Paborito mo yung ibirit sa video kay right? No? <laughs> one moment in time. Kaya pakinggan niyo at ma-appreciate natin ang galing niya. And it's so sad that her life it's, it's so sad that her life ended tragically. When she she began as an artist in the house of God. That's where she got the love for singing and music. Kasi ho, pag gospel singer ka, sa church ka kumakanta, hindi ka pwedeng performer. Of course, magpa-practice ka, aayusin mo yung, hindi naman puro, pu- puro puso. Kasi may puso ako, hindi i- i- ilagay mo sa puso yung mic. Hindi pwede, kailangan mag-practice ka. Pero hindi ka rin pwedeng kumanta na hindi nakakapasok sa kaluluwa ng tao. Yan ang gospel music. Yan ang awit sa iglesia. Diyan nagsimula si Whitney Houston. Her mother trained her. That's why kakaiba ho yung kanya hong talent. God-given. Once in a lifetime. Pakinggan ho natin itong kanyang performance. Pag gumanta ho siya, yung pag mataas na mataas na, lumuluhod lang siya. Destiny. Tayo, papatong na tayo sa mga upuan. Di ba rin maabot? Tapos di ba yung bumirit, tapos bumalik sa pinakamababang tono? Siguro kung igaw yung kung saan-saan pa pumunta yung, alam mo yun? Ang hirap. Ang galing ho talaga niya, di ba? Kaya ho, bakit ho, in, nakakalungkot ho, bakit tragic ang sabi ko, ng mga nakakaalam ng patungkol sa kanyang buhay, siya po ay sexually abused. By the way, nan, nan, ang movie ho niya ay ano po, lumabas nung kumakailan dito sa mga cinemas ho natin. And I think it's in Apple TV or HBO Go. Um, siya po ay na-sexually abused ng kamag-anak. And kaya ho siya nalulung sa droga. And then she met Bobby Brown, her husband. So, everybody was, everybody was blaming Bobby Brown to be the one who brought the misfortune in her life. But the reality is, wala, they scratched their, each other's backs. They contributed to each other's demise. Kasi ho, ano ho eh, si Whitney, hindi ho niya naayos yung tribulations at kaguluhan ho sa loob. Kaya mahalaga ho ito eh. Mahalaga ho ito, mahalaga ito. Mahalaga yung anong nangyayari sa loob. Ano yung mga self-talk mo? Ano yung sinasabi mo sa sarili mo? Ano yung kinukwento mo sa sarili mo about sa buhay mo? Ano yung iniisip mo? Mahalaga yun. Malungkot dahil hindi ho siya nakabangon. And the last few hours of her life, She was reading the scriptures. She was reading the Bible. That's the danger of it. We thought that when we read the Bible, we're good. But no. Taking action based on what we read and meditate on, that's where faith comes in. And faith is honored by God. Nagkakaroon ho ng fruition sa ating buhay. Nakakalungkot ho kasi there were several people in her life na sumira din po talaga sa kanya. Yung sarili niyang pamilya. Pero, meron din po mga taong gusto siyang tulungan. Tumulong sa kanya. Imagine nyo ho, paano hindi siya naka- nakabangon? Ang sakit nung isipin, ano? Kasi minsan ho, mas maigi pa yung tao na wala ganong tumutulong sa kanya na iaangat niya yung sarili niya. Kesa yung tao na spoon-fed na nga eh, 
hindi pa rin may ang ang sarili. Kasi ito ho yung analogy eh. Kunyari, itabong ka sa gitna ho ng dagat na malalim. Anong gagawin mo? Anong gagawin mo pag tinapong ka? Pag tinapong ka, magpapakalunod ka na lang. Diba? Pag tinapong ka, ito na nga ang aking kapalaran, ang mamatay ng nalunod. Diba hindi? Ang gagawin mo, lahat ng strokes ng langoy, pinagsama mo na. Yung backstroke, yung butterfly, yung ano ho, yung freestyle, pinagsama mo na sa isang ano ho, langoy, para lang mabuhay ka. Hindi ho ba? Kaya may, maya-maya, lulutang ka. Kaya minsan ho, tinatapon ho tayo ng Diyos sa malalim, doon ho sa mahirap. Yung wala ka na talagang masasabi sa sarili mo kundi, Lord, di, hindi ko alam to. Lord, di ko alam to. Bala ka dyan. <laughs> Lord, tulungan mo ko. Kasi pag alam mo pa, wala eh. Buhay ka pa eh. Kaya hindi pa kikilos ang Diyos. Yun ang pinag-usapan natin last time I was here. The, the, the uh, liminal space. That was what um, uh, the book... Contemplative prayer was talking about James Danayer, the author. Liminal space. Pag sumabog na ang ating pangunawa, doon na papasok ang Diyos. Si Whitney ho, hindi ho na niya naiangat ang sarili niya sa pagkakalugmok. At yun ho ang sad thing. Siguro ho dahil hindi niya tinanggap ho yung tulong. Kasi pwede ho tayong tulungan ng sangkaterbang tao. Pero pag hindi ho natin tinanggap yung tulong ho, hindi ho natin dinesisyonan mismo sa ating buhay, hindi magsusurvive ako. Hindi lang magsusurvive, magta-thrive ako. Hindi lang magta-thrive, kundi magsusor ako, lilipad ako. Pag hindi mo dinesisyonan yan, walang magdidesisyon yan for you. Kahit ang Diyos hindi mangingialam sa'yo. That's what happened to her. Not all the help in the world could ever help her. It was her. It was you. It's you. It's me. We have to decide. We have to choose. There's an interview by Diane Sawyer with Whitney Houston and her husband. Nakakalungkot. Yung denial ho. Panoorin ho natin, hindi ho para i-judge ang taong ito, kundi yung pwedeng mara magkaroon ho tayo ng lesson dito, pwede ho nandyan lahat ng resources sa atin eh. Pero wala pa rin mangyayari. Sa totoo lang, magulang mo, uh, mga tita-tito mo, lahat ng resources, village mo, lahat ng mga tao sa paligid mo, tutulong na sa'yo, pero walang mangyayari. This is what happened to her. Panoorin ho natin and look at how she denied things. Yun hong hindi mo ina-admit sa sarili mo may problema ka. Kaya ho, Diba? Para kang pumunta ng doktor, diba? Para kang pumunta ng doktor tapos sinabi, ano na ba nang nararamdaman mo? Ay, wala, dok. Okay lang ako. Eh, bakit ka nandito? Wala lang. Paano ho tayo gagaling, diba? Panoorin ho natin itong interview ho sa kanya. Grabe ho, ano? Napansin niyo ho. Parang, alam niyo ho, nung napanood ko yan, grabe, yung parabang gusto mo na lang yakapin si Whitney. I'm, I'm at a loss for words. Yung pag hindi ho natin tinanggap, yung problema ho natin, no cure will ever help. No one can ever help us. That's why we have to decide to get our, back, our life back together to be whole again, to rise up again, to resurrect from the dead. That's our choice. Because we have the power already by the Spirit of God. We are already enabled by the power of God. All we have to do is act on it. All we have to do is believe in it, that it's possible. The power that rose Jesus from the dead is the same power that is at work within us and among us and in this village. 
Kaya alam niyo ho, kahit ano pang dami ho ng tulong and resources, kung wala ho yung decision na yun, we'll end up in a tragedy. Kaya alam niyo ho, sabi ho ni Dawson Church sa Bliss Brain na libro, he talks about adversity. And I couldn't agree more. Sabi niya, adversity can sometimes make us even stronger than we might have been had we not suffered it. Research shows that people who experience a traumatic event but are then able to process and integrate the experience are more resilient than those who don't experience such an event. Such people are even better prepared for future adversity. When you're exposed to a stressor and successfully regulate your brain's fight-or-flight response, you increase the neural connections associated with handling trauma. Para kang nagbubuhat ho ng, ano ho, ng barbell. Una, five lang, five kilograms. Mamaya-maya, naging ten na. Mamaya-maya, fifteen. No? Pas tumata pang ka eh. Kapag na-over ka mo yung isa, pag iyong na-handle yung isang adversity, mas tumatapang ka. Kaya minsan tinatapong ka ng Diyos, palalim ng palalim eh. Yung tubig. Kasi pinapatapang ka. Kasi ini-squeeze out of you yung, 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 ano ho eh, yung power to overcome. The good things are being squeezed out of you. You cannot draw that out from yourself without these things, without the pressure of life. Kaya sabi ho niya, neuroplasticity works in your favor. You increase the size of the signaling pathways in your nervous system that handle recovery from stress. These larger and improved signaling pathways equip you to handle future stress better, making you more resilient in the face of life's upsets and problems. Kaya o malambot o yung mga tao mo lang pinagdaanan o may sumasalo lagi na kanilang mga pinagdadaanan. Kaya ho hindi ho totoo na ayan ho ang dami niyang trauma na pinagdaanan, hindi ka pwedeng umangat ang dami hong tao mas worse pa diyan. Kaya ho today ho kung ikaw po ay nadidiscourage sa buhay mo, wala naman ho sigurong ni isa sa atin na kaparehas ho ng pinagdaanan ni Victor Frankel. Si Victor Frankel ho, yung psychiatrist ho na mas lumalim ang pang, in, pangunawa ho sa kahulugan ng buhay, nang siya po ay nakulong kasama ho ng mga prisoners of war during the Nazi time. You remember his story? Kaya ito po ang sabi ho ni Dawson Church. No? Bago ho tayo umiyak ho sa mga pinagdadaanan natin, wala hong dumaan ng katulad ng pinagdaanan ni Victor Frankl sa atin. Yun ang tipong mga mahal mo sa buhay. You will see them, your, your, your elderly parents, your children, they will march towards that room. Na, bibigyan sila ng mga sabon because they will have a bath. But in reality, that's a ga- gas chamber. Pa- papatayin sila doon. Alam niyo, oh, wala, ho, wala ho tayong pinagdaanan na ganoon. And yet, mas lumalim mo ang pangunawa niya sa buhay. Tingnan niyo ho, sabi ho ni Dawson Church dito, In man's search for meaning, Frankel observed that the sense of meaning is what makes the difference in being able to survive painful and even horrific experiences. Yung sense of meaning. Kaya, kaya ko sinasabi sa inyo kanina, kailangan lumabang ka, not for yourself. Kuhaw natin, not for ourselves. We have to survive this, not for ourselves. But so that God will be glorified, so that people around us will be helped, so that your life will be an inspiration, and so that, so that you will be able to, to give a hand to people who need help. Kailangan magpalakas ho tayo, hindi para sa sarili natin. Kuhaw natin, Magpalakas ho tayo para ho may paggamitan ng Diyos sa atin. Kaya ho tayo dapat umangat. Kaya ho ang sinasabi niya na pag meron ho kaakibat na kahulugan ng pinagdadaanan mo, yan ho, dyan ka ho makakasurvive. Hindi lang survive, but you will thrive and soar. Kaya sabi niya, 
He wrote, he, we who lived in concentration camps can remember the men who walked through the huts comforting others, giving away their last piece of bread. They may have been few in number, but they offer sufficient proof that everything can be taken from a man. Highlight that one. Everything can be taken from a man, but one thing, the last of human freedoms, to choose one's own attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. That's why you and I, we have the choice of what attitude we will, we will have in whatever circumstance we're going through. Kung meron mang umaaway sa'yo, umaapi sa'yo sa trabaho, o ang hirap ng buhay, pamahal ng pamahal, o parang ano ba? Ano bang mangyayari sa kinabukasan ng Pilipinas? Nakakatakot. But we can choose our attitude. And if we choose the attitude of faith, Lord, I will follow you. Then God will make sure that He is with us. That we will never lack so that we can do good things. We are created to do good things. That's who we are. During darkness, we are created to be a light. In the midst of ugly, ugly things, ugly circumstances, we're created to create beautiful things. That's who you are. That's who I am. Yan ho ang ating balikan. Kaya ako sabi niya, Frankl maintained that while we cannot avoid suffering in life, we can choose the way we deal with it. We can find meaning in our suffering and proceed with our lives with our purpose renewed. As he states it, when we are no longer able to change a situation, which is, by the way, most of the times, situations, circumstances, problems, they're ushered upon us. We can change them. What can we do? Hate them? No. We are challenged to change ourselves. And that's a golden opportunity to become a better person. Kaya ka dinadala ng Diyos dyan. Kaya tayo pinadadaan sa maraming mga bagay na hindi mo maintindihan. Yun ang sinasabi ni Leonard Sweet sa libro niyang I am a follower. Huwag kang maghanap ng certainty. Pag sinabi ni Lord, follow me, follow ka lang. Be caught up in what He's doing. Dance in the rhythm of His music. Dance with Him. Be caught up in the rhythm of His songs. And you will understand. He's doing something marvelous in our midst. Ito kasing mga mata ho natin, Nakikita lang ho natin, panlabas eh. We can't read into things. Only God can. And we spend more time with Him, we begin to see. We begin to have a glimpse. Kaya sabi ho niya, in this beautiful elaboration, Frankl wrote, between a stimulus and a response, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. The last of human freedoms is to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances. Kaya alam nyo ho, gusto kong ipapanood sa inyo itong taong ito na for many, many years we have been talking about here in Bread of Life. Pero gusto kong maalala ulit siya in the light of the life of Whitney Houston na sana, sana it took a different turn. Ang prayer ko na lang, sana in her last moments, nagkaroon ho siya ng peace. Kahit pa paano. I don't know. Could it be just a wishful thinking? I don't know. Pero itong taong ito po, balikan ho natin siya today because he had nothing. No limbs, no limits ang sa kanya. 
Kasi ho, tayo hong mga Pilipino ho, hindi ho tayo, ano eh, hindi ho tayo no limbs eh. Ang dami ho nating resources, pero ang atin hong mentality ho, dun ho kailangang umangat. Diba ho? Kaya ho, itong si Nick Vujic, kilala ho natin, di ba? No arms, no legs, no hope. Dapat patay na siya, bata pa siya. Pwede naman siya, yeah, alagaan siya ng magulang niya. Pero siya pa rin yun eh, kang pipili. May time na gusto na niyang magpakamatay, pero hindi. Piliin ko pa rin mabuhay. Bakit? He's a Christian and he knew the resurrection power. So as we go back to his story, which a lot of you already know, may we be reminded na baka ang problema ho natin sa ating mga buhay ngayon, kaya hindi tayo makaangat o bumangon po sa ating pagkakalugmo, ay dahil ho, tayo na rin mismo. Tingin ho natin sa ating mga sarili ay kulang. Hindi ka kulang. Ikaw ay handiwork, craftsmanship ng Diyos. Kinreate ka ng Diyos for such a time like this. Where you are is where God will shine the most through you. Panoorin ho natin si Nick Vujic. It's an overworked word, but there's no other way to describe Nick Vujic. He really is inspiring. Nick was born without arms or legs. And when he tells the story of his birth, the shock, the confusion suffered by his parents, he'll have you in tears. Growing up wasn't all that much fun either. So how did this poor little Aussie kid do so well? Become school captain, go to uni, get a double degree, and set himself up in a really great job. That's the story we're about to tell. A message of hope that's helped teenagers all over the world cope with their problems. A message you'll never forget. You should jump in, mate. Nick Vujic was born with no legs and no arms. I'm going out on the limb, what do you want? <laughs> but he sure got plenty of guts. This is scary, right here, right? We gotta have guts. Or you're a bit crazy. Hey. Nice man. Thank you very much. You're a generous judge. <laughs> this 25-year-old Australian is climbing over every obstacle life puts in front of him, and he's doing it with style. can do anything, can't you? <laughs> There's no harm in believing so. <laughs> Everybody's going through something. You know, we're all going through something, just my pain is a bit more visible than yours or somebody else. When that clicked, it was like a light bulb went, you know, just flashed in, in, my, in my brain. I'm like, hey, now life I see as an opportunity. This circumstance, there's got to be something good. No arms, no legs, no worries, mate. <laughs> so do you see yourself as a disabled person? I, I know I have no arms and no legs, but, but the, the definition of disability is something stopping you from being able to do something. In my life, there's hardly anything I've found that I can't do. Even go on or even go. <laughs> Nick is an inspiration with a phenomenal passion for life that's intoxicating for everyone who meets him. Nice. <laughs> I feel like I'm enjoying life. <laughs> 
in my life more than the average person out there. That I'm achieving more things than the average 25 year old. It's, it's great. I'm fulfilling my dreams, man. Those dreams brought Nick to America 18 months ago. In a short time, he's become a smash hit as a preacher and motivational speaker. Welcome, Nick Boyke. The secret to his success here is his Aussie accent and the ability to laugh at his lot in life. Yeah, when you see me from the outside of a vehicle, you have no idea that I have no limbs. And we're at the traffic lights and this car comes up next to us and this girl is looking at me. So I look at her, she looks at me and I'm like, cool, let's have some fun here. I grab the seatbelt in my mouth and I loosen it like this. And then in the car seat, I just did this. And she was like, <laughs> humor underpins everything for you. Humor in your message. Um, you know, if I, if I start feeling sorry for myself, then I'll, I know that that, you know, you know if, I'm, if I've got a sad face, I'll pull guy, right, you know. But if I see a guy, you know, who, who's able to joke about his himself, you know, it, it's it's good to laugh once in a while, mate. It's 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 a good relief. It's really, really, I mean, to be able to laugh at life, that that's what I've I've found that I can now accomplish. Uh, there were many times I couldn't do that. Nick was born in Melbourne in 1982, the long-awaited first child of Boris and Dushka Vujicic. When I was born, the doctors held me low enough um, so she couldn't see me as soon as I was born, and she heard me cry. But uh, obviously she saw a, a, a worried look in the doctor's face. He went pale. My dad looked over. And, um, you know, his, his face color changed as well, and my mom's like, what? What's going on? What happened? It's a question that's never been answered. Nick's birth confounded the doctors then, and still does. So this was never detected on ultrasounds? Correct. Your mum medication while she was pregnant with you? No, no medication wasn't for little mite. That was a decade before I was born. And so she knew all about that. She didn't even take Panadol or any painkillers while she had a headache and not a touch of, of anything else that might harm, harm her pregnancy. It took a while for your parents to accept their baby boy like you are. Yes. I mean, I couldn't imagine the shock, the grief, the natural feelings of guilt, anger, confusion, it sounds like a period of mourning almost for me. Oh, it was. When you were born. For about four months. It was hard, you know, when I was born, my mum didn't even get flowers from anybody. You know, you get a, you get a firstborn son, no one sent any flowers. <sighs> but despite his lack of limbs, Nick was a perfectly healthy baby. And with sheer will, he adapted to everyday life. It's that same perseverance and imagination that drives him today. That foot of yours is amazing. Isn't it? I mean, without it... I'm so thankful for this little thing. You know, one day I broke it. Really? I, I, I sprained, I didn't break it, but I was playing soccer one day. I sprained my foot, I couldn't walk in it for three weeks. It's all about feeling disabled. <laughs> and I suppose having that foot also at least gives you something I take for granted is a sense of touch and feel. This is true. It's true, because I, I think because I have less body surface, my skin is more sensitive than other people's. And, um, yeah, it definitely gives me that sense of touch as well, for sure. It's quite funny, having half the blood volume in my body, uh, everything hits me twice as hard as well. So if it's sugar, caffeine, or alcohol, it you know, hits me twice as hard. So. Whiling away some time on the water gives me a sense of control and independence. You good? Very good. Very Look at that! That is perfect! Well done. Is that alright, eh? Yeah. <laughs> be able to draw the mammoth very soon. <laughs> it's something he's always craved. As a teenager, he was determined to do things his way, to lighten the burden on his parents. These days, his life is so busy, He's had to employ a full-time carer to speed up the process. Yeah, that's good. Thank you very much. But he doesn't need anyone to help him with his emails. 
do you pray for arms and legs? Every now and then I do. I do pray for arms and legs. You know, I, I do have faith that God can right now in front of us just, you know, come down with his light or whatever and bang, I have arms and legs. But the joy of having no limbs and being able to be used in such a unique way and powerful way for people, like, you can't give me any amount of money to even consider taking a magical pill to have arms and legs right now. And I'm here tonight to tell you this, that no matter who you are, no matter what you are going through, that God knows it, he's with you, and he's gonna pull you through. Nick's disability has become his draw card. On the spiritual circuit, his ministry, Life Without Limbs, is now one of the biggest shows in town. So far, he's visited 14 countries and spoken to 2 million people. Six years ago, you were speaking to 300 year 10 students at a school in Brisbane. That's right. What's the biggest crowd you've spoken to today? Now 110,000 people. Yeah, that was in India. That was incredible. Talk about nerves. My palms. Hindi ko siya naawa sa sarili niya. Di ba po? Kung anong meron siya, yung maliit na... <laughs> maliit na paa. Hindi mo nga matawag na paa. Yun ang ginamit niya. Kung anong meron siya. Siya naawa sa sarili niya. And pinagbuti niya, pinag-igi niya ho kung sino siya. So that he can help others. Inspire others. You see, that's where your joy will come from. When you and I are able to help others to lift each other up, to bear one another's burden. That's where our fulfillment comes from. That's where our strength comes from. Diyan ho tayo lalakas. Yan ang misteryo ng buhay. The more you give, the more you receive. The more you bless, the more blessings will come. The more kang tumulong, the more kang ikaw ang natutulungan sa totoo lang. The more na ikaw ang nagbigay, para hindi ka nakapagbigay, hindi ka nawalan, ikaw yung nadagdagan. Yan ang sikreto ng buhay. Na marami ko sa atin, hindi ko natin nakukuha. Kasi we continue to hoard for ourselves. Kaya ito po, ito pong iiwan ko po sa atin, yung binasa ho natin kanina. Yung una ho ay galing ho sa librong I Am a Follower by Leonard Sweet. The first words Jesus' disciples heard, Follow me. Ka lang. Lugmo ka ngayon, o ila mong tumayo, o napagod ka, nang hina ka. Hindi. Sabi ng Diyos, follow me eh. Sabi ni Lord, follow me. Para kang si Pedro, na discouraged, na discaril, nakakahiya yun. Pinagkanulo niya si Lord, ang best friend niya. He was a traitor. Pero sabi sa kanya ng Panginoon, follow me. Hindi naman siya sinabihan ng Panginoon na magpakalinis ka muna bago ka sumunod sa akin. Hindi, follow me. Kung ano itsura mo, follow me. Ayusin natin yan along the way. It's how God moves. Kaya sabi niya, Jesus invites us to join His journey to live and move and draw. Draw our very being from Him. As the life of Paul reveals in the walk with Jesus, sometimes we run. Other times we slog or dawdle or saunter, wander or meander. Sometimes we hike. Sometimes we march or we trudge, limp, hobble. Sometimes we pound the pavement. Sometimes we promenade. Sometimes we fall behind. Sometimes we follow at various distances. Peter at least followed Jesus at a distance. Kumbaga, minsan mahina tayo, minsan malakas. Minsan ubus ka, minsan triumphant ka. But kahit anong itsura ng buhay mo, follow me. Yan ang sabi ni Lord. At a distance is never safe, but it is better to follow that way than to flee like the other disciples did. We try never to run away or swagger or strut. Jesus does not give, ito po highlight this one. Jesus does not give the entirety of the truth all at once. Walk with Jesus and you learn 
You learn your sin. Nakikita mo yung kasalanan mo, nakikita mo yung kahinaan mo, yung kalakasan mo. Nakikita mo as you journey with Him. You learn your salvation. You learn the meaning of grace. Travel with Jesus. Journey on. You don't get the answers before the questions. You get the answers or you learn to live with the questions as you go with Jesus. Both Jesus and the world need your inexperience and ignorance. Don't wait to solve the world's problems. Wherever you are now, whatever you are doing, begin now. Sometimes you just inhabit the mystery as you go with Jesus. Misterioso. Hindi mo alam. Paano? Saan? Hindi. Basta sunod ka lang. Behold, I tell you a mystery. The journey of a pilgrim is filled with things understood not. Normal yan. Kaya sabi niya, the great work of faith is to embrace those things you know not now, but shall know thereafter or understand more fully by and by. Being a follower is less about showing how much you know than showing humble gratitude for how much there is to be known. That's why today, my friends, don't grow weary in doing well. Don't grow weary in following Jesus. Don't grow weary in doing good. Keep on doing good. If you and I stop doing good, then we divert from our God-given nature. Then we despair. That's when despair comes in. That's why, pag gumagawa ka ng kabutihan, madami ding kalaban, madami ding balakid. Pero okay lang yan. Sabi ng Lord, follow me. Hindi mo maintindihan, pero follow me. Sa unos, follow me. Kasi siyang nakakalakad ho. Sa, gitna, sa, sa ibabaw ng tubig, sa gitna ng unos, that's who our God is. Follow me. We keep on following Him. Kaya ho, I'd like to end ho, before we ask the worship team, team to sing with us a song as we make this our prayer song today. Basahin ko lamang po ang Hebrews 12. Can we all rise up and make this our prayer as I read this to you? Let's close our eyes and let's meditate on this. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're fighting for. But I believe that you have come here today because you are fighting for something. You're desiring something. Whether it's for yourself or now you, you realize that you should fight for it not for yourself but for the purposes of God in your life sana ang meaning na ikinabit natin sa ating mga ipinaglalaban sa buhay ay magbigay sa atin ng apoy upang mas ipaglaban pa po natin ang mga bagay na pinapangarap ng Diyos para sa ating buhay Hebrews 12 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before Him endured the cross disregarding its shame and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners so that you may not grow weary or lose heart. 
In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood and you have forgotten the exhortation. My child, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when you are punished by Him. For the Lord disciplines those whom He loves and chastises every child whom He accepts. Endure trials for the sake of discipline. God is treating you as children. For what child is there whom a parent does not discipline? If you do not have that discipline in which all children share, then you are illegitimate and not His children. Now, discipline always seems painful rather than pleasant at the time. But later, it yields the peaceful tr fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Kaya po, ito po ang sinasabi ng Panginoon sa bawat isa sa atin. Therefore, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be put out of joint but rather be healed. I say, church, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees because Jesus is telling us, follow me. Yes, Lord, we will follow you wherever. And we, here we are, we worship. And as we sing this song, Father, we give to you our burdens. We leave these burdens down at your feet and we honor and glorify you. Let's sing this song. And by your grace, only by your grace, Lord. Lord, we pray for this village, our church. We will strengthen our weak knees, our drooping arms, Father, for the sake of your honor and kingdom here. Lord, maraming salamat, Panginoon. Ang bawat tahanan, pagpalain mo, O Diyos, ng iyong kapayapaan, bawat pangangailangan, tugunan niyo, aming Ama. Salamat po sa aming iglesia na patuloy mong ginagamit dito po sa aming bansa. Maging faithful lamang kami, aming Ama. Panginoon, may we be faithful to do good works here where you have called us. So I pray for our people here, Lord, strengthen each one because we're created to triumph. We're created to do good works for your honor. And yes, Lord, we will be strong. We will be strong, Father, because our strength comes from the power that resurrected your Son, Jesus. Maraming salamat po aming Ama sa iglesyang to and salamat din po sa amin pong senior pastor na si Coach P po, aming Panginoon. Patuloy mo siyang bigyan ng wisdom. Patuloy aming Ama o Diyos na magkaroon po ng katuparan ng mga pangarapin sa kanyang puso na binibigay niyo. Bigyan niyo ng kaliwanagan ng kanyang isip sa tuwina. Lagi pong provide ang mga pangangailangan niya ng kanyang may bahay na si Bianca at ng kanya pong buong pamilya. Aming Ama o Diyos, patuloy po namin po aming Ama sa tithes and offering that we can offer you today the fruit of our labor, the works, the jobs that you have given us and provided for our families. And as we go home today, we say, Why so downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will praise Him. He is worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be honored. He's worthy to be glorified. We give you thanks and honor, Lord, in the matchless name of Jesus. We pray as a church, as a village, we say amen.
We shout, You are good, Lord. You are good. You are good. God bless you. Salamat po, maraming salamat sa inyo. At samahan po kayo ng Panginoon. The joy of the Lord fill your heart today and this week. God bless po.